Hello, my name is Robert Lee, Clinical Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of California, Irvine. On behalf of my co-investigators, I would like to thank the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for supporting this research through a 2008 ASG Endoscopic Research Award. In our abstract, entitled Proficiency of GI Trainees in Independently Attaining Quality Benchmarks in Colonoscopy, we sought to answer an important question that faces GI Fellowship Program Directors and Hospital Credentialing Committees. How do I know if a trainee is competent to perform colonoscopy? The current ASGE guideline on privileging and credentialing stipulates that 140 cases have to be performed for a trainee to establish a minimal level of competence in colonoscopy. Where does this number come from? Well, it's solely based upon only one measure of technical proficiency in colonoscopy, the ability to innovate the CECA. However, recent studies have clearly demonstrated that an endoscopist has to possess other key skills, such as the ability to detect and remove adenomatous polyps to not only perform colonoscopy, but to perform colonoscopy at a very high level of quality. Consequently, we sought to determine the threshold number of cases at which a GI trainee is able to meet all of the major goals for quality outlined in the ASGE guideline on quality colonoscopy. These include a cecal innovation rate of greater than 90%, an adenoma detection rate in men of greater than 25%, a colonoscopy withdrawal time of at least six minutes, and a successful removal of polyp rate for polyps less than two centimeter in size of at least 95%. To achieve this objective, we conducted a two-year prospective study of seven first-year GI fellows at UC Irvine and at UC San Diego. Over this two-year time period, the trainees were evaluated during supervised colonoscopy sessions utilizing a study questionnaire that was filled out by the GI nurse who was present in the room for the procedure. This questionnaire evaluated the trainee on their ability to perform key tasks, such as innovation of the cecum and also the detection and removal of polyps without the significant aid of the supervising attendant. Thus, the major emphasis of the questionnaire focused upon whether or not the trainee was able to achieve these tasks without the aid of the attending gastroenterologist. Furthermore, colonoscopy withdrawal times were measured for each of these evaluation sessions. A total of 15 evaluation sessions were performed for every 50 colonoscopies that were completed by the GI fellows during their fellowship training. Based upon this data, we were able to calculate key values for each of the ASG benchmarks at various stages of fellowship training. So let's move on to the results. All of the trainees were able to meet the goal for independent adenoma detection rate by the time they reached 51 to 100 cases completed. As you can see here, they all maintained their independent adenoma detection rate above the 25% threshold at 51 to 100 cases and maintained this rate throughout the rest of the two-year evaluation period. Furthermore, at 0 to 50 cases, all the fellows exceeded the goal for a colonoscopy withdrawal time with a mean of 12.7 minutes. In contrast, the trainees did not reach the goal for independent cecal innovation rate, or ICIR, until 201 to 250 colonoscopies had been completed. It was only at this level that all the trainees exceeded the goal for independent sequel innovation rate of greater than 90%. Similarly, when it came down to the successful removal of polyp rate, or SRPR, for polyps less than two centimeters in size, it took 201 to 250 cases for all the trainees to reach the 95% target. In conclusion, we find that it takes at least 200 to 250 cases for a trainee to develop proficiency in independently performing colonoscopy in accordance with ASGE guidelines on quality. Furthermore, we believe that further prospective studies are certainly required to guide future reforms in credentialing policies when it comes to colonoscopy.